Today we celebrate the Mass of the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Mass is offered for the intentions of the people of our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God other than you who cares for everything, to whom you might have to prove that you have never judged unjustly. Your injustice has its source in strength. Your sovereignty over all makes you lenient to all. You show your strength when your sovereign power is questioned. 
and you expose the insolence of those who know it. But disposing of such strength, you are mild in judgment. You govern us with great lenience, for you have only to will and your power is there. By acting thus, you have taught a lesson to your people, how the virtuous man must be kindly to his fellow men. And you have given your sons the good hope that after sin, you will grant repentance. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means. And that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. This is the word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus put a parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. 
While everybody was asleep, his enemy came, sowed Darnell all among the wheat, and made off. When the new wheat sprouted and ripened, the Darnell appeared as well. The owner's servants went to tell him and said, Sir, was it not good seed that you sowed in your field? If so, where does the Darnell come from? Some enemy has done this, he answered. And the servant said, Do you want us to go and weed it out? But he said, No, because when you weed out the darnel, you might pull up the wheat with it. Let them both grow until the harvest. And at harvest time I shall say to the reapers, First, collect the darnel and tie it in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Earlier in the week, someone asked me if I'd heard of one of the latest developments in artificial intelligence. Apparently, someone somewhere has used AI to create an icon of Jesus, an icon that you can speak to and who will give you answers in return. And my response was, well, that isn't really novel at all, since Christians have been doing this for over 20 centuries. It's called prayer. God speaks to us. God responds to us in all kinds of ways. And Jesus teaches us in the manner not only of a great teacher, but as the supreme teacher. And he uses not just abstract theological language, which we can't relate to, but examples from everyday life, especially by using the parables, which, like poems and songs, are multi-layered and inexhaustible in meaning. Last week, the parable of the sower. This week, the wheat and the weeds. An enemy sows weeds among the wheat so that they grow up side by side, good and evil coexisting together. Now, this says something very fundamental about our spiritual experience, about our life experience. Very often, certain types of good in this life would not exist unless paired with certain types of evil. Now, we believe in another world, in a higher world, this will be different. But whilst in this world and in this body, the fact is that certain types of good would not exist unless paired with certain types of evil. That is, certain goods would not exist without particular kinds of struggle and even evil. I think we can see that things like wars or pandemics might be an example of this universal law. Think, for example, of someone who struggled with a chronic illness or disease for many, many years in their life. I think about some of the people that I've known and ministered to down the years in my different parishes, and in this one. Yesterday morning, for example, I received an email from a friend, someone I've known for over 30 years, a father of a large family, asking me to pray for him because the cancer he has has taken over. He's been told he's just got a few weeks to live, asking me if I would do his funeral. In many cases, you ask the question, would this particular person have grown in the 
virtues of patience, of courage, of depth of soul, without their particular cross and suffering. People often want to see suffering taken away and got rid of. But lots of virtues would not come about unless that person had struggled and suffered in the way that they did. Now push this even further, and perhaps controversially, but following what St. Thomas Aquinas says, would the shining virtues of people like St. Maximilian Kolbe or St. Edith Stein or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, would they have emerged without the wickedness of the likes of Hitler and Stalin and their evil regimes? Now, it's not a justification for their wickedness, but as St. Thomas says, without the cruelty of the tyrant, we would not have the patience of the martyr. In a higher world, in another world, in the next world, we know it will be otherwise. But here below, only certain types of goodness and holiness appear when they are provoked by certain types of evil. Now, if in our enthusiasm to eliminate some of these evils in the world today, we are like the men in the parable who say to the owner of the field, let's tear up these weeds, or we say to God, tear up all these evils and sufferings now, then we will eliminate huge swathes of positive experience and of possible moral excellence. Now, these are not easy questions, obviously. And we can't solve all of the puzzles of life by our own solutions to them. But in a very provocative way, this parable shows us a path and a pattern for life. Like it or not, wheat and weeds grow up together in this world. Tearing up the weeds isn't always the right answer because the wheat can be compromised. So Jesus says, let the wheat and the weeds grow together until the harvest time. Our lives, your life, my life, exists with everyone else in this world, the good and the bad, the virtuous and the wicked. But we have to live as God's children alongside those who are confused and misled, as well as those who have the truth that we share. And I suppose the ideal is to make sure that the weeds see the light that comes from the wheat. Many of us are preparing now this week to travel to Lourdes tomorrow on our diocesan pilgrimage. There's a number of adults and young people going from our own parish here. And every pilgrimage, of course, is a symbol of that journey we're making towards heaven, towards eternal life. And as we do so, all of us now, we can ask the help of Mary's prayers, Mary, our Immaculate Mother, as we strive to live as that wheat amongst the weeds. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now. I believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin and became. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken from the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With confidence in the Father's love, we turn now to him in prayer. For the young people throughout the church, may they be beacons of faith and generous service in today's world. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. From those, for those from our parish and diocese on pilgrimage in Lourdes this week, May they travel safely and receive the graces of Mary's shrine. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For peace in our world at this time, that the suffering people of Ukraine may be given fortitude and their aggressors receive the grace of conversion. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have died recently. Jimmy McCrimmon, Christiane Duval, Janet Wheel, and Edmund Todrick, and Peter Boardman. We pray also for the dead whose anniversaries occur at this time. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. We ask the prayers of the Mother of God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, the banished children of To thee do we send up our sighs, morning and evening, in this veil of tears. Turn then to this gracious advocate the eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our Lord Jesus. O Clement, O sweet Virgin. In silence, let us bring our own particular intentions before the Lord. Father, you work always for the good of those who love you. In your mercy, turn all things to our eternal good as we make our prayers through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion various offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all who have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim our Lord, and the resurrection of Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bridget of Sweden, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form, by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. show each other some sign of peace.
The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I exhort you, as always, to read my pastoral message in the newsletter this week. If you don't receive the newsletter, you can do it easily by going on the parish website to the contact page and clicking on there and subscribing. As we prepare now to go on the diocesan pilgrimage with our bishop and young people and older people from all over around the diocese, we do assure you of our prayers. Please pray for us that we may have a safe, happy and grace-filled pilgrimage. And the rest of you remain behind. Enjoy the rest of the summer, especially the children who have just begun their summer holidays. And again, as I said in the newsletter, remember the supreme and most important thing each week, the offering of the Eucharistic sacrifice. O oh Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God.